Applied Linguistics Group uploaded this video for BS English students. Dr. Khalid Malik, the founder, has a PhD in Applied Linguistics TESOL. Having more than 25 research papers, he taught at many foreign universities and is now in a postdoctoral study program abroad. Join Applied Linguistics Group at youtube.com slash at 1966 Pakistani or use a QR code to join our Facebook group at Computation Linguistics, Generation Strategies Generation Natural Language Generation, NLG, is the enterprise of automatically producing text in English or any other human language, from computer internal representations of information. To the extent the computer internal information can be directly converted into human language, the NLG problem is simple. But most computer programs that require language output, such host programs include expert systems, artificial intelligence reasoning systems, help information systems, etc., format the information to support their own needs. That makes it rare for each individual representation item to correspond exactly to a unique word in the human language, and each grouping of information exactly to a sentence. Therefore it is the NLG system's task to identify in detail which aspects of the information need to be said, to regroup and reformat that information into sets that correspond to paragraphs and sentences, to select appropriate phrases and words, and then to assemble them all into grammatical output. Interactive Generation In order to find the completion for a given prefix, the set of generated hypotheses could be restricted to only those which exactly match the given prefix. However, as our probabilistic models are far from being perfect, this approach is too restrictive. Instead, we penalize the hypotheses by introducing an additional cost in the log-linear model for each word that does not match the prefix. If hypotheses that can generate the given prefix are present in the active set, those do not get any additional costs. In the pruning process, the incompatible hypotheses will be discarded while the correct ones will remain in the set. Of course the last word in the given prefix should be considered in a different way, as it itself can be a prefix of the next word. To ensure the extensions start with this word prefix, the comparison must be done at the character level. One might think about different costs for the mismatch of words within the prefix and for extensions which do not start with the given word prefix. If a word within the prefix cannot be produced by the search algorithm, then it will obviously not be produced by any further search call. This kind of substitution error is less harmful for producing good hypotheses than unfitting extensions and should therefore be penalized less. Using this approach, we can expect to obtain optimal results as a new search is performed at each stage, and the information provided by the prefix is used to avoid search errors made in previous stages. However, the search process has a high computational cost and in the interactive systems the response time is a critical point. Therefore, this approach can normally not be used for practical application and some more time-efficient alternatives have to be found. The generation of the best translation for a given source sentence FJ1 is carried out by producing the target sentence in a sequential order. At each step of the generation algorithm we maintain a set of active hypotheses and choose one of them for extension. A word of the target language is then added to the chosen hypothesis and its costs get updated. This kind of generation fits nicely into a dynamic programming framework, as hypotheses which are indistinguishable by both language and translation models, and that have covered the same source positions, can be recombined. The search space is however too big, and therefore pruning has to be done, which leads us to a beam search algorithm. Interactive generation with word graphs in Architol, 2003 an efficient algorithm for interactive generation using word graphs was presented. A word graph is a weighted directed acyclic graph, in which each node represents a partial translation hypothesis and each edge is labeled with a word of the target sentence and is weighted, according to the language and translation model scores. Weffing et al., 2002, give a more detailed description of word graphs and show how they can be easily produced as a subproduct of the search process. An example of a word graph is shown in figure 2. It is clear that each node in the word graph defines a prefix of a possible translation of the given source sentence. 
The main idea behind this approach is to find the node 2 that corresponds to the given prefix and generates the best completion, starting from this node. This can be easily accomplished using a forward-backward algorithm. As the word graph is a representation of a subset of the possible translations for a source sentence, it can happen that the given prefix cannot be found in the word graph. In this case, we look for the node with minimum edit distance to the prefix and select the completion path with best backward score. The algorithm for computing the edit distance between a string and such a graph is a straightforward extension of the Levenstein algorithm for computing the distance between two strings. The computational cost of this approach is much lower than that of the one presented in section 4, as the whole search for the translation must be carried out only once, and the generated word graph can be reused for further completion requests. This is also, of course, its main limitation, as the word graph does not get automatically adapted to the new information provided by the prefix. This can be somehow alleviated by allowing a more flexible alignment of the generated sentences to the given prefix using the edit distance measure. Another refinement can be added to the system. Usually, if the translation system was not able to find a completion in the generated word graph that is compatible with the last partial word in the prefix, the user has to type the whole completion. Instead, we now try to find the completion with highest probability using only the language model. This simple heuristic slightly increases the performance of the system, as words that were rejected in the pruning process can be recovered. 5.1 Combination of both strategies in order to overcome the limitations of the generation with word graphs, we can try to combine both strategies. We start by generating a word graph for the translations of the given source sentence and then use it for searching for completions. If, at a certain point, we determine that the generated graph does not correspond with the prefix typed by the user, we generate a new word graph tailored to this prefix with the method described in section 4. An important point is how to decide if the word graph should not be used anymore and that a new one has to be generated. In our experiment we used a simple heuristic, if the last word in the prefix is not complete, i.e. the prefix does not end with a blank space, and the selected node in the word graph does not produce a completion for this word, the word graph gets regenerated. This simple criterion already leads to an improved performance over the standard search strategy using word graphs. What still has to be determined is if the response time of the system, increased by the overhead of regenerating the word graphs remains acceptable for interactive use under real-life conditions. Offline experiments seem to indicate that this is the case, see next section. In a natural language generation module, we often distinguish two components. On the one hand it needs to be decided what should be said. This task is delegated to a planning component. Such a component might produce an expression representing the content of the proposed utterance. On the basis of this representation the syntactic generation component produces the actual output sentences. Although the distinction between planning and syntactic generation is not uncontroversial, we will nonetheless assume such an architecture here in order to explain some of the issues that arise in syntactic generation. A. Natural language, grammar is a formal device that defines a relation between natural language utterances and their corresponding meanings. In practice this usually means that a grammar defines a relation between strings and logical forms. During natural language understanding, the task is to arrive at a logical form that corresponds to the input string. Syntactic generation can be described as the Problem to find the corresponding string for an input logical form. We are thus making a distinction between the grammar which defines this relation and the procedure that computes the relation on the basis of such a grammar. In the current state of the art, unification based, or more general, constraint based formalisms are used to express such grammars. Example lexical functional grammar, LFG. British English 82, Head-Driven Phrase Structure Grammar, HPSG. 
PS87, and constraint-based categorical frameworks, compare to US86 and ZKC87. Almost all modern linguistic theories assume that a natural language grammar not only describes the correct sentences of a language, but that such a grammar also describes the corresponding semantic structures of the grammatical sentences. Given that a grammar specifies the relation between phonology and semantics it seems obvious that the generator is supposed to use this specification. For example, generalized phrase structure grammars, GPSG, GKPS85, provide a detailed description of the semantic interpretation of the sentences licensed by the grammar. Thus one might assume that a Generator based on GPSG constructs a sentence for a given semantic structure, according to the semantic interpretation rules of GPSG. Alternatively, Bus90 presents a generator, based on GPSG, which does not take as its input a logical form, but rather some kind of control expression which merely instructs the grammatical component which rules of the grammar to apply. Similarly, in the conception of GP90A, generator is provided with some kind of deep structure which can be interpreted as a control expression, instructing the grammar which rules to apply. These approaches to the generation problem clearly solve some of the problems encountered in generation simply by pushing the problem into the conceptual component, i.e., the planning component. In this overview we restrict the attention to the more ambitious approach sketched above. The success of the currently developed constraint-based theories is due to the fact that they are purely declarative. Hence, it is an interesting objective theoretically and practically to use one and the same. Grammar for natural language understanding and generation. In fact the potential for reversibility was a Primary motivation for the introduction of Martin K's functional unification grammar, FUG. In recent years interest in such a reversible architecture has led to a number of publications. Applied Linguistics Group uploaded this video for BS English students. Dr. Khalid Malik, the founder, has a PhD in Applied Linguistics TESOL. Having more than 25 research papers, he taught at many foreign universities and is now in a postdoctoral study program abroad. Join Applied Linguistics Group at youtube.com slash at 1966 Pakistani or use a QR code to join our Facebook group at